Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. So it's good to be here and it's good to see everyone um, as we start and continue in this new year. Um, if we can get ready for the call to worship. If you will join me in the call to worship. We come for God gathers us here with that community called faith. We come for God welcomes us here into that home called grace. We come for God reunites us here sisters and brothers in that family called love. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we give you thanks and praise for this day. And Lord, on this third Sunday in the season of the Epiphany, we acknowledge that this is the day that we have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Right, as we, as we gather, and, um, it is summer and it's often hot and we, we struggle with, with the heat and we struggle with load shedding. We make this statement of faith, despite everything, that this is the day that you have made and we shall intentionally be glad and rejoice in it. Lord, it's, for it's in rejoicing in you, it's in drawing near to you that we find our strength. It is in gathering in your presence that we find our peace. It is in listening to you, it is in crying out to you, it is in praising you that we find different lenses through which to look at the world and where we find courage to live in this world, not as people that have abdicated life, but as people who find new purpose. So Lord, we praise you. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you that this morning we can remind each other that there's nothing that can really separate us from the love of God. The love that we find in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So Lord, we've gathered just as we are. We've gathered with all our our worries, we've gathered with all our disappointments. We have gathered just as we are, Lord, with our full human condition. But we have come confidently because you are the one inviting us. We have come confidently because you say to us, come just as you are. We come confidently, Lord, because you, you say to us, come to me, all whose work is hard and whose load is heavy, and I will give you rest. We come confidently, Lord, because your psalmist David was the one that helped us to understand that the Lord is indeed our shepherd and he will lead us to the green pastures and the quiet waters where we will be restored. So, Lord, that's why, that's why we come. We come also as, a, as people confessing our brokenness. We come as people confessing our need. The mere fact that we are here, Lord, we are saying to you, Lord, we, we've tried so many things and we thought that we, we could do it on our own. And the more we try, the more we realize that we need our gracious, loving, and compassionate God. So Lord, this morning we come before you and we ask you to pardon our sins. Those words that we have uttered to others that have hindered them to come close to you. Those words that we have uttered that have broken your commandments. Those words that were shameful. So, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, for, for the many things that we have done that, that hasn't been long with children of God. 
Forgive us for the day our deeds that were so shameful before you. Our deeds that didn't speak or communicate the narrative of love and grace and truth. Forgive us, Lord, where we have failed you. Lord, and our thoughts, that's the one that we sometimes struggle to even control. The many things we contemplate, the many things we think about, even as we gather to worship, Lord, we think about the strangest things. But thank you that we have the Holy Spirit that can guide us. And thank you that we can even come to, to worship and before you we acknowledge these things, we don't deny them. And as we acknowledge them, we give them to you for you entered the messiness of this world. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you that as we confess our sins, that you, our Lord, our God, who is righteous and compassionate, is able to remove our iniquities as far as the east is from the west. Thank you, Lord, also for your word that says, if my people who call upon my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. But thank you, Lord. We are here in your presence. Speak to us, Lord. We shall listen to you. Lead us, Lord, and we shall follow you. Be glorified in our lives. And Lord Jesus, thank you that you have once taught us to pray as we now sing together.
can then uh, register um, and uh, then the, 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 the classes will, will, will start. Then, uh, brothers and sisters, please note the following. Uh, we now, normally at the end of the month, we have the week of prayer. Um, and uh, the dates have been changed uh, from the ones that appear on the calendar. It will be held, in fact, uh, to, from tomorrow on <coughs> um, to Thursday. Uh, the week of prayer will start and it will be uh, morning sessions only. So uh, from tomorrow onwards, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday at 11 o'clock in the morning, we will have the, uh, the week of prayer uh, meetings and um, there will not be any uh, services in the evenings. Um, this has been shifted. Uh, to accommodate uh, Reverend Simon's uh, uh, program, his synodical program, he will be out of town uh, at uh, that particular time, so that um, uh, uh, it was necessary to change the text. So from tomorrow onwards, and please uh, communicate this uh, also to family and other members who are not here, that uh, the week of prayer will be starting tomorrow, and um, it will be at 11 o'clock in the morning. Then, um, uh, 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 on, on, on a lighter note, we want to express a sincere word of uh, congratulations uh, to all those who have uh, been successful in the, uh, in the last matric exams, uh, the candidates as well as their parents and families who have put in uh, so much uh, for the success and we want to wish each and every one uh, the very best for uh, their future endeavours. Um, then brothers and sisters, um, uh, just a reminder, the gift of grace contributions uh, to the UCCSA. There are envelopes at, uh, in the foyer if you haven't taken one uh, and this is for each confirmed member. Um, so you may take the envelopes uh, uh, on your way out if you haven't done so yet. Um, and uh, your contributions, uh, it is a 50 rand per annum contribution. Um, and uh, this will be paid over in the month of February. Um, the actual date is the 5th of February, which is uh, commitment Sunday and um, uh, it is on that day where the official collection uh, will happen but uh, we have uh, uh, the whole February uh, to get in our contributions each confirmed member uh, 50 rand per annum so this is this is a once-off every year um, to uh, fund the activities of the UCCSA. Um, so that is an appeal to each and every one. Um, if you haven't received a church calendar uh, yet, uh, calendars are also available in the foyer uh, and we uh, suggest uh, one calendar per household. Also, the, the Harvest Festival will be um, at uh, uh, the first first Sunday in March, and uh, those envelopes, as per usual, will also be available uh, from uh, uh, next week onwards. So keep the Harvest Festival in your uh, 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 in your in your mind as well, so that um, that will also be a successful uh, event, as it always has been in the past. Then, brothers and sisters. Um, uh, there are prayer requests um, <coughs> for those members who are ill or recovering at home. Uh, we think of uh, the Langefeld family, Brother Mosey Langefeld, he is currently in hospital. And then the Gertse family, baby Gabriella, has been discharged. Um, 
and uh, the, the, uh, her parents want to thank the congregation for all the prayers that had gone up. Um, and then um, also the um, uh, 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 prayer support for uh, those members that uh, we, we uh, whose names we do not have, but uh, that you may be aware of. Um, also, uh, Reverend van der Linde is, is uh, also at home, so keep him in your prayers as well. Then, um, some of our members have lost loved ones. Um, we think at this time of the Roberts family, Sister Karen Roberts has lost a brother, uh, has passed away, so we ask you to keep them in your prayers. And then also, the Mart and the Nikolai families, um, uh, Sister uh, uh, Avis Mart has passed away, and uh, the funeral was yesterday. And we also want to thank the Mart family for the uh, flowers uh, that we see. And then uh, also keep in your prayers other members uh, whose names perhaps we do not have that you know of. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. <coughs> um. Just, just from my side, uh, it's wonderful to meet with you this morning, so welcome. Um, I was pleasantly surprised walking in, I looked to, towards my, my right at the back, I saw, but I know this guy. Uh, uh, Rodney has been, a, uh, he's right at the back there, um, one, of, one of our very active members at the uh, Berea Church. Um, he, he used to assist me with the, with the technology. Um, he is one of those people who had, you know, people are running away from Durban now uh, because they loot them. <laughs> uh, no, 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 his family is still there. Rodney, it's good to, good to see you. And, uh, you know, we had wonderful times back in, back in Durban. And, uh, you know, I always give thanks to God for, for, for the ministry that you, that you shared in there. Um, but as you know, you know, we've, um, we are seasonal laborers. And uh, the... The other day there were members from, from Berea and they, they said, you know, people, are, people were angry with you when you left. Um, and I always had to explain to them that, you know, um, even if you read in, in Luke chapter 4, right towards the end, people said to Jesus, Jesus went away, he prayed because he needed to discern the heart of the Father. And people found him and they said to him, listen, you need to stay here. And Jesus' response was... I cannot stay because I have to proclaim the, the good news of the kingdom of God in other towns as well. Um, so Rodney, you know that that's why I'm, I'm here. So um, I, I continue to pray for the family at, at Berea. Um, so we remain one in faith. Welcome, brother. And uh, you, you stay close enough so uh, this, this can be your home, eh? <laughs> um, so, fr so friends, also, let me, uh, I, I can brag this morning. Eh? I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do it. Yeah, um, uh, you see, I, I still have, uh, my memories of matric is rather traumatic. I don't talk about it much. Yeah, I don't discuss it. The other day, uh, friends of mine, we, we were in matric together and they, they put up a list on Facebook of the, uh, you know, list of top students. Now I was in the, I think I was in the E class. So the majority of those top guys are A class. Um, and, uh, you know, so people commented. And someone said, Christopher, where, where are you? <laughs> I said to them, man, you know I played rugby and you know I played the fool and, uh, and, and I, I discovered myself. Long and short, yes. So, so Kelsey, and she told me, don't talk about this and I'm not going to stand, I'm going to walk out, but just allow parents to be proud. So, so the girl did matric and she came home with six distinctions. I don't know how they do it, but all we can do is give thanks to God. But, but let, me, let me go one step further, and because I need to talk to you about, I need to talk to you about the goodness of God and the providence of God. Now, 
as members of the Congregational Church, you know exactly how much I earn. So you have an idea about how I need to budget. Last week, because Kelsey wants to go to UCT, last week I started, <laughs> they showed me the fees. And I said, I started to say to a girl, um, you, you know we want to give you whatever we can. We know, you know we want to support you. Um, don't you want to go to a university that's closer to us? You know, less trouble with traffic and traveling, and it's much cheaper. It's almost half cheaper than... And she just looked at me. And I'm doing my math, and I'm saying, no, no, this, I, I don't know how we will do this. And the other day, I'm on the phone with someone in a serious conversation, and I hear commotion in the house. Uh, what's happening now? And they come in very disrespectful, say, you know, st stop that conversation. Oh, <laughs> what is, what's happening here? Just, just to show me that the university is saying, you know, we, this is what we off we're offering you a scholarship. So friends, just to say to you that, and we every now and again we need to just stand still and realize that our God is our God. Our God still provides. Our God does miracles. Um, that's a testimony. And I, I really want us to just give thanks to God. For the goodness. Trust him. Try him. <laughs> because the decisions that we often take as we follow Christ, people look at it and it doesn't make sense. But our God is an awesome God. And he still reigns. Amen. Amen. That's it. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace, for your love, your providence, and your goodness. We know ourselves and we know our lives and we know, Lord, that we don't always deserve your goodness. But today we can choose to praise you. Lord, in fact, we have no other option but to praise you. Lord, we confess that, that there were moments where we really doubted. There were moments where we wanted to do something else. And thank you, Lord, for just this one lesson again. Will you teach us? I'll take care of stuff. I'm your God. I will help you. I will save you. I am Jehovah Jireh. Lord, I thank you for that. Amen. Any birthdays? <laughs> I, I got a bit carried away, but, you know, just allow me for once. Uh, uh, any birthdays? Anyone needing to give thanks to God? There was a birthday today. Was it your birthday? What was the birthday? No, no birthdays. No birthdays. There's a birthday at the back. Can, can we come forward? That's a beautiful birthday lady. Ah, let, 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 let's see her. Let's see that birthday girl. Yes. What is her name? Emily. Emily, can you... Would you mind to come to me? How old are you now? Huh? Four years old. What a great girl. And there's an uncle. He's much older. Hey. He's much, but he still looks good, eh? Yeah, look. Yeah, no tummy, you know, taking care of himself. Okay. So, are we going to say thank you to Jesus? Hmm? A birthday, maybe? Who feel you are? 71 and to look like that. Uh, so, we, we give thanks to, to God. Um, we give thanks to God for the lives of our children and how
how they grow up and how they bless us. Um, and we thank God for protecting them. We thank God for how they are able to grow intellectually, how they are able to grow socially, and how they teach us so much about God. Because the thing about our children is they, they teach us to trust because they, they don't worry. They play and they just do their thing, but they know mom and dad will take care of stuff. And so they teach us about also, our children forgive so quickly, eh? We will give them a scolding, and after a while, they're okay. So let us give thanks to God, and we, we pray God, pray to God for, for His grace. Lord Jesus, thank you for moments like these where we can give you thanks and praise. Thank you for, uh, for birthdays, for Emily, her life, and thank you for the joy that she brings to her parents. Thank you, Lord, that we can... And trust her into your holy care as she grows up that she will have your holy angels um, taking care of her thank you jesus for your word may your word be a light on her path may your word help her that she will never stumble nor fall thank you for our brother eddie thank you for his life thank you for his ministry his witness thank you lord for for his quiet confidence He's one of those people that's never demonstrative in terms of how they exercise their faith. But quietly and faithfully following you and serving you. So bless him and bless Emily. Bless all of us who today give thanks to you. Lord, we honor you. We give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for our tricks and thank you that you came through for them. Thank you, Lord. Uh, there, are, there are many, there are other children in our church, Lord, that have done extremely well. So we praise you and we ask you, Lord, to open the doors that might still be closed at this stage. Open the doors so that they can walk in. And as they walk in, give them the confidence and the courage, Lord, to live as your children, to lift up their heads and to know that I'm the Lord's. And through Christ, who strengthens me, I can do all things. So thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you and we give you thanks. Amen. Shall we sing happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to
If there's less on a button, I will call it tight in our office. Um, and as we do that, we, uh, we sing the song that reminds us to count our blessings. Our scripture reading today is from Psalm 27. I will read the whole of Psalm 27. Reading from verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord protects The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceive me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. 
At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me. O oh God of my salvation, even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me how to live, O oh Lord. Lead me along the, the right path, for my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath, they threaten me with violence. Yet, I'm confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. This is the word of God. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Um, last week I, I attended a, a service um, at uh, Dutch Reformed Church just around the corner there. Um, and it was interesting to see, uh, we, we are blessed here, very Really blessed and really fortunate here in Balbo South not to be struggling with load shedding. Uh, but all the other mortals, that, that's, that's a reality. So I felt so for that uh, poor minister because he, he, he well, his sermon was, uh, was, was good. Um, a little bit long because, you know, in the, especially in the Reformed tradition, you know, strict reformed reform tradition, the, the word is always very central and those, those guys spend about 30 minutes preaching. Um, but an interesting sermon that he, that he gave. But then I, I thought, you know, I wonder when the power is going to go out. <laughs> and then as they were playing the, the last song, power went out. Um, so all of a sudden there's because they're also projecting the songs. Um, and I, I realized, so, so load shedding can sometimes help the congregation if they want to go home. Uh, but I thought I need to come back with a little bit more discipline myself. Um, so, that, so that some people, because you know, the different times it goes off and how it impacts on our cooking and, and things like that. So, so don't, don't worry, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be brief this, this morning. So dear friends, we, we've started a, a new year and we are still, today is the third Sunday of, after the season of Epiphany and that's why, why we changed from the white to, to green. And Epiphany, uh, for those of you, um, I mean obviously you, you speak this language, it's, uh, it's not my preferred language but I speak it to, to work. Um, the word Epiphany is really when a light goes on. An epiphany is that moment where the light really goes on for you. Where, where, where things begin to make sense all of a sudden. Um, you know, sometimes people say, that moment when the penny drops. Um, you know, at home, uh, at, at home I, I'm the slow one. <laughs> I'm, I'm the slow one. So it takes a little bit longer for, for some of us. And... Um, God bless those of you that are quick uh, for the lights to go on. But the season of Epiphany is, is really all about, it, it sort of continues the narrative of, of Christmas. Because, you know, sometimes in, in, in Christmas um, imagery, in, in paintings surrounding Christmas, you often see um, those, you see the shepherds, and then you sometimes, in some of the paintings that I've seen, you would also have the 
the Magi, the men from the East that came to, to, to bring him gifts. That's theologically incorrect because the Magi, those men from the East, only came later. It was first those, you know, the shepherds that came to witness what had happened. But, but in terms of, of the research that I've done, Magi actually came, a, you know, a week or two after the birth of, of Jesus. But the interesting thing is, remember now the story of Christmas. The Magi are the people that saw the star. They were the people that studied the stars. And because of this different kind of star that seemed to lure them somewhere else, they started to follow the star. But also, remember, these people, the, the, the signs that they, they practiced, um, also connected with some other prophecies. So, so they, they had, in the East, they had this prophecy when a particular star begins to shine. It will be a very, it, it will be a star that is just unlike any other star. It will be a sign that a king will be born. Now, now this prophecy was there among the Gentiles. This prophecy was there among the people of the East. So possibly these, the, the Magi um, or these wise men came from uh, perhaps Iran. And they followed this star. They did not serve the God of the Israelites. They did not serve Yahweh or Elohim or El Shaddai. They served other gods and therefore, from the perspective of the Jews, were considered to be Gentiles, unbelievers. And so they followed the star. They followed the star. They followed this light. And eventually found Mary and Joseph with the baby Jesus. That was their moment of epiphany. Now we actually see this. Now this prophecy actually makes sense. Because it was also interesting for them. On their way to see this child, they, they were also met by Herod, who said, uh, so, so who are you guys? What are you doing here? No, 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 we've seen this star. And this star is about a prophecy in our world about a king that will be born, a king that will change the whole trajectory of world history. And so Herod, through his, because often politicians operate from a place of insecurity, and that's why you have um, spies all over. And, and it's, it's interesting, I've been reading some of the, the stuff in South Africa uh, how there are different groups spying against each other, even within the governing party. It's always been like that. So, of course, Herod had his spies. And he said, when you find him, come back. Now, of course, something wonderful happened. They found Jesus and they discovered something happened as they presented the gifts. But then also, God appeared to them through his angel in a dream, saying, listen, this guy is up to mischief. He's insecure. He's got evil intentions. So they went to him. A light went on for them and they went back to their country. And the story of this child that had been born and this new king, whose kingdom would be one of truth and justice, it is in the prophecy, was taken to, the, um, to their countries. And so that's the whole thing of, of Epiphany. And now, in the season of Epiphany, now this is our lectionary reading for today. We normally don't focus on a, on a psalm, but I just couldn't resist the temptation of the psalm because it was also one of the psalms that my dad would recite over and over again as I was growing up. I heard the psalm and my dad would embrace it despite his own struggles, despite the fact that my dad was also a very practical person, a person that believed that you, you need to do your work, you need to, you can't just... <laughs> this psalm sustained him. So, where are we in South Africa? What's happening? So, load shedding is obviously the big thing. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> It is interesting, I saw the pre current, our current president and the former president um, 
clips of them also talking through the years about this load shedding thing and how it will never happen again, it's, it will not be an issue, and, and, and so on and so on. But here we find ourselves in load shedding, and it's, it's creating disturbances in our lives. Um, it's creating intense disturbances. Um, we don't know about it. We learn how to manage it. Um, I don't quite always need electricity to do my stuff, but we know about those farmers. We know about... Um, poultry farms. So they, they need electricity for the eggs and they need electricity for... And so we know that during this time is it thousands of little chicks that had to be culled. They are not the only ones. There are other stories. We also know of, of you know, how people with specific health challenges at home who need electricity uh, for their breathing equipment and things like that, how they struggle and how lives are being disrupted. And so because of load shedding, obviously people are going to lose their jobs. Uh, you know, Kentucky is having a problem and we know how South Africa... And now there will be an increase of how many percent? Sorry? 18.65. <laughs> Dicey speaking. 18.65 is, is a lot, and you are getting less. Now, that's just one of, one of the challenges there are. But, but of course, we know when these things happen, other things go up. Prices of food will go up. Um, I, I love decent coffee. Uh, so, so, I'm just putting it out there if I come to you. I, I'm not particularly fond of. Frisco. Ne, as a belief. I will very gently decline the offer. I'm not trying to be rude, it's just, you know, my taste buds, you know, can't deal well. What's it, Moswar? What's the rat, man? No, we struggle. We had to, we were forced to drink these things. Hey, so, so I drink dough, dough eggs, egg birds. <laughs> We always buy them when it's on special because they're often these specials. And then you buy two of them. Um, all of a sudden, the other day, we went to the store and Lizelle said, mm? Right, Mr. Simon? 150 now. Uh, we'll have to go back to Rick Coffee. <laughs> so she was determined and she, she, she bought something else. Because we now cannot spin that. So she said, we need to train your taste buds. We need to really wean it from, from this strong coffee that, that you want to have. So uh, uh, Joe, Joe normally buys coffee for the office. Um, Joe, I mean, I know you'll find grace in your heart. Perhaps, you know, uh, because this poor man at home can't drink this. Point is, things are changing, things are becoming expensive, and we have to make changes. But it fills our hearts with anxiety. It fills our hearts with anxiety as, as things becoming more expensive. Will we be able to, to deal with everything? The interest, I'm not even, interest rates. How much have, have your bond increased, those of us that are paying bonds? Uh, have, you, have you noticed the, the, how much you're paying for your car now? Okay, it's okay if you save. Because if you have some money, that's, that's wonderful. You're getting a little bit more. But for the normal person, you know, who, who really has to struggle a little bit, things are tough. But then we are people of faith. Then we, um, as the song suggests, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. So now we turn our eyes upon Jesus, we turn our eyes towards the word of God, and, and David writes this beautiful psalm. And it's interesting how this psalm, they are, they are very clear, two, there are two clearly different uh, moods in this, in this psalm. The first part of the psalm is, is, is really, it's, it's full of gaiety, it is, it is confident, it is strong, but the second part of the psalm is also, but Lord, we, we're struggling here. 
Because he starts by saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress protecting me from danger. Why should I tremble? So he's saying three things here. The, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. So he's, if he's light. There's darkness. He brings light so that I can see. He brings me to places of epiphany where I can make sense of things. He's my salvation. He's the one who saves me. He's my fortress. He's the place where I run to so that I can hide, so that I can feel safe. And because of the fact that, the, that this is the Lord, this is the character of the Lord, I, I, sh I, don't, I don't fear, I don't tremble. Even when evil people come to devour, devour me when enemies and foes attack me because that's the reality this is david speaking friends so we know that david understood this as a shepherd boy he had to deal with the dangers of wild animals bears and lions he tells us the story how he had to deal with it he understands he he knows goliath he knows saul um, threatening him and he says, when evil people come to devour me, my enemies and my foes attack me. They are busy attacking me. They will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I'm attacked, I will remain confident. So he acknowledges that there is tension. He acknowledges that there is um, things are not always easy in life. He acknowledges, despite the fact that you serve the Lord and you sing beautiful praises to God, it is not always, it is not always easy. But then he says, one thing I ask of the Lord, and, and the, the thing that I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. So remember now, this is David speaking. What was his son's name again? David's son? Okay, but the, the, there's another one. That, that's the famous one, yeah. So, Solomon. Uh, so, so Solomon is the one that built the, the temple. So during the time of David, there is no real temple. There is no real sanctuary for God. There's just this, this tent that is, that is moved. But David makes a big thing of one thing I ask of the Lord and I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Psalm 23, the same thing is being proclaimed. And I will live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Friends, he says that this is God. God protects me, conceals me. He, I'm okay, I'm not even afraid. People can do whatever they want to do. But God is my light and my salvation. He's my fortress. He will take care of me. But then from verse 7, he begins to say, hear me as I pray, Lord, be merciful and answer me. So he, here he is um, in supplication, in petition before God. He's saying, Lord, uh, this, is, this is my statement of faith. This is what I feel. This is what I, what I experience. But also, Lord, it's, um, these are just statements. But my reality challenges me. Firstly, our understanding of God, our image of who God is, determines how we will behave. So we've got to be careful about who God is for us. If, if you look at God and God is really a merciful God, a loving Father, if God is really the one taking care of stuff, then it will guide your steps it will help you so the image of God who is God but if you have an image of God that is a weak God if you have an image of God uh, you know a, a, a judgmental God a vengeful God a God just full of wrath and nothing else then that will paint your whole picture and it will guide how you walk in terms of your following of God. So let's turn back to David, the author of this particular psalm. David is possibly writing this psalm during the time that Saul is pursuing him. 
Saul also became, became insecure. David became a threat to Saul. And, and I mean, he sent these soldiers, he sent these spies to find David and they wanted to kill him. And David is feeling it. And he's writing this psalm, this song. But David is reminded of who God is. David is reminded of the fact that God helped him as a young boy to shepherd the flock of his father. God helped him as a young boy because all that he had, remember now, Jewish children grow up with a deep understanding and it's imprinted in their minds, in their lives, that yeah, Israel, the Lord our God is the only God. Every day they need to say the Shema. And the Shema is the, the one formula that they say every day to remind them of who God is and it shapes their understanding, it shapes their uh, uh, perspective on God and because of that perspective that had he'd been socialized with it he had been taught to to understand and say this is God to make the statement always he was able even to go as a young boy to go and challenge the giant Goliath and to say Goliath you are so big you come to me with, after Goliath insulted him, <laughs> you come to me with your big spear and all these things. I come to you with a slingshot, but I fundamentally come to you in the name of God. That is the audacity of faith. <laughs> faith makes us audacious. Faith makes us to, to do things and to say things in ways that, no, no, you can't back it up really because there's nothing, but it's just God. So that is David. And here David says again, because he learned to, 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 to have this understanding of God. Here again, during his difficult times, he says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And so, my dear friends, I want, to, I want to encourage you this day that you hold on to, your, to the seeds of faith and allow the seeds of faith in your life to grow, to germinate and to grow further, to allow the Word of God to strengthen you. I want to encourage you to actually read the Word of God. I want to encourage you to actually come before God in prayer. I actually want to encourage you with all the challenges in the world to learn how to trust God and to begin to see who God is. We have seen it last week. I'm the pastor. I doubted. I said, no, this money is too much. We can't afford it. We don't have the money. We don't want to embarrass ourselves. We don't want to be beggars somewhere. And now God just comes and God is saying, Phew. he's sick. <laughs> yeah, I am. Emmanuel. God with us. I will never leave you nor forsake you. May our understanding of God also strengthen our experience of God as we begin, begin to see more and more who God is. But you know, it is really important that you learn how to say this is who God is to me. Is David a saint? Is David a very pious person? He wrote the most beautiful psalms. But David was the most normal guy in the world. David was not always wonderful as a father. He made lots of mistakes as a father. David committed adultery. It's a good son of that. You know? David committed adultery. David killed someone because he wanted his wife. And yet David writes these things. So I want us to understand this. Despite our brokenness, God remains God. But if we simply learn how to reach out to him, 
like David. I can't quote this in English, but in Afrikaans it says, after he, he messed up, he says, Skip for my reinaar to God. Gee op niet in die binneste van my vaste geest. Verwerp my nie van die aangezicht en neem my die geest nie van my af weg nie. Laat my weer die vreegde ervaar van iemand wat ik ken. Iemand wat dier die vreegde is. So if you think that, that a life of faith and a life of victory is only for the very holy people, the very pious people, let's change it immediately. Because this word is for people like us. This word is for pastors who sometimes and often stumble and fall, who often mess up, who often struggle with faith. This word is for you. So the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God is God. God bless you. God strengthen you now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, I'm not going to pray now. Let us pray through the song, Reverend Nova. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of love. church and within the congregational tradition it actually says that our meetings is a continuation of our time of worship where we further discern um, the heart and the mind of God. So I'll pronounce the benediction those of you who really need to, to um, go home I'll, I'll greet you at the door um, but I hope that the, the majority of the members would be able to stay um, Joe, will it be 
30, 35 minutes, the meeting. Is, is, is that, you heard the secretary, 30, 35 minutes maximum. Let, someone is saying make it 40. Let's receive the blessing of God and go in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with all of us. Be with us here, be with our loved ones that are near and those that are far, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.